there are a lot of steps to really showing your work clearly. And so sometimes you might say, I don't remember every single step. Eventually, as you continue to do this, especially with problems, when they're a little bit more simple, when you're at a little bit lower of a level in your math, in your sciences, in your engineering, you'll eventually become better at it. and It'll become natural and eventually it'll become second nature and you'll do it just because you're so used to doing it. But for help for now, if you like acronyms, possibly a good acronym to remember to help show your work while solving problems is the acronym SOLVEM. Uh, the S in SOLVEM stands for sketch. The O actually could stand for two things, your objectives and your observations. L means we're going to list some things. We're going to list our variables. We're going to list our equations. And then lastly, we're going to manipulate. Now, this doesn't cover every single thing that you should do when you problem solve. There are times where you might need a little bit more than this, but it's a basic outline to at least get you started. So have a meaningful, labeled, large, neat graphic, a sketch, a plot, a table, something that's visual and really shows your information well. It can so serve multiple purposes. Make sure that it's, it means something to you. It could help you understand the problem more so you can solve it better. It can also help somebody else look at it, who's looking at it, and see if you really understand the problem, or maybe it could help them understand the problem as well. Next, we want to list our objectives out. A lot of these problems are going to be multiple steps. We can't just do one quick step and we're done. And as we do these problems, sometimes we forget where we're at or we don't have a nice outline and organized plan of how to do it. We might spend so much time on one step that we forget to do the last step. And so making some type of list of your objectives or making a checklist is a great way to make sure that you complete the entire assignment. Listing your observations. Sometimes I consider this your assumptions. In the real world, we have to make observations about how things really work. We have to make assumptions about how the real world works and all these little things that, that might not be 100% accurate. List those out because that's going to affect our answer and we might get a slightly different answer from somebody else. And it would be nice to have this list at the beginning of a problem stating, hey, this is what I was thinking as I went through it. And instead of arguing about your final answer, you can go back and argue about your assumptions and figure out which one's right depending on the assumptions that you made initially. Make sure you list out your variables. These are your knowns. These are your unknowns. They're the things that you were given at the beginning of the problem. And what you want to do is you really want to start using subscripts. And subscripts are a way to show different variables. So if I have in a problem, if we're dealing with time, and I say that t is my variable for time, I might have three or four times. I could have a time for Sally. I could have a time for Tom. I could have a time for car one. I could have a time zero. All of these are times, they're all using a T to describe this. It's really easy just looking at the variable that anything with a T is a time in this problem. But then I put this little subscript at the bottom and it tells me exactly what time this corresponds to. If you know or are given information about any of these variables, if I know that time zero is zero seconds, then write it write the value and the units. If I know that Sally's time is five seconds, write five seconds afterwards so that we have all the information that we need. Make sure that you list your equations. Sometimes it can be helpful to number them. If you've ever read through a textbook and we have an equation, we could have something like area equals length times width. And off to the side, you might see that this is equation one. And volume equals area times height. And this is equation two. Later on, when you're showing your work, instead of always having to refer back to things, you could say, hey, using equation one, we found the area to be, and then you can show your work without having to rewrite, hey, remember this area equation, A equals length times width. You can refer back to these. It keeps it organized. It keeps it neat. Lastly, manipulate and show your work. Go through, do all the math, make sure you're using your math correctly. 
Make sure that you show each step. You're not doing anything in your head. You're not doing this fancy hand-waving magic and saying, I got from here to here. I'm not telling you how to do it. Uh, add a little bit of commentary. Explain what's happening. Uh, it doesn't need to be paragraphs, but it could be a short sentence, maybe even just a phrase or a word, but something that tells me how I'm getting from one step to the next so that I really, really understand what's happening.